Check, check, one, two, one, two. We are about to go live. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Fantasmic Journey podcast. It is about 9 p.m., and it is a beautiful Wednesday night, and we are here as usual. As you can see, we're wearing our sponsor shirts today. Today is Glide Gear. So, um, if you guys were watching on the YouTube channel, you saw a bunch of our graphics and everything go through, and of course, like right now, we're showing... Um, all of our sponsors that help make this uh, show possible so I wish you guys would go ahead and subscribe uh, we're gonna have two awesome guests tonight we're gonna have a uh, published author uh, Mike Resecker and of course we're going to be talking to Jeffrey Vaughn as he uh, takes us inside the crime and punishment museum so we got a really cool show for you guys how you doing over there? I'm doing fine. We're running a little. We're running right I'm early. not going to worry about that. It's probably going to die in there anyway, so I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. So just leave it alone. So, uh, you excited to talk to our guest tonight? Yes, I am. I've I've been kind of dissecting the book, and of course, uh, I I've going to be interesting on both guests tonight. Okay, so, and why do you say that? Because it's right down my category you mean right down your alley yeah i never heard right down your category before well, well the category of history okay well explain what you're talking about well it's just like alex project says you know you have those categories in jeopardy and and you you have to answer the question answer it with a question okay well it's kind of the same concept tonight i might be asking them in a in a in a jeopardy style questions Okay. So, keep your ears on. It might be interesting. Keep your ears on. It might be interesting. Yeah. Uh, one thing we would like to go ahead and say that our hearts go out to all the families and everything of the Las Vegas uh, mass shooting that, that happened uh, during a Jason Aldean uh, concert. It's uh, unbelievable what this world is coming to. Um, no idea why it's even happening, but uh, our hearts go out to those family members. Um, they did have a, a visual that was over at the Haunted Museum where uh, Zach owns the building. So they had a like a midnight visual, which is really cool. So anything new that you want to talk about? Well, we know that this is Cancer Month, so I, I play homage to every survivor that has Beat the battle of cancer. Um, I pray the girls respects for anybody that 
was not a survivor of cancer. Cancer runs strongly in my family, so I understand where it comes from. I lost my mom in 2002 due to cancer. Uh, my grandfather died of cancer in 1987, so, uh, and I had a couple of people that made it through and survived cancer, and of course they died of other things later on in life. But right. this is Cancer Awareness Month. And ladies out there, including men, we've known a couple of men that's had, you know, breast cancer and and stuff. But um, take respect of yourselves. Get checked out. Make sure that you do your blood panels every year. If you got to get those uh, ta-ta squished, get them ta-ta squished. I do it. Everybody else does it. Get your ta-ta squished? Yeah, get your ta-ta squished. I think I'll pass that. But uh, we did have that cancer scare with me. Yes. And, and we'll... that was really sad. Um, we wound up... Uh, I was really s sick. And um, basically what happened is uh, I wound up going to Lourdes Hospital. And... They wound up diagnosing me with, uh, well, they really didn't say what it was. All it was is uh, they said, we're going to um, admit you and we're going to put you on the cancer wing. And that's where I went. I had no idea what was going on or why um, this was going on until um, they wound up running tests and stuff on me. And uh, what are you doing? I don't know why it's right there plain as day but anyway um make a long story short they wound up uh doing a colonoscopy on me and they found a polyp which they went ahead and removed so thank god that they removed that but uh yeah they they freaked out when they saw that and they thought it was cancerous because i also had two cysts on each of my uh kidneys which uh went away you know by taking antibiotics but you know with her cancer scare and her family perishing due to cancer it kind of freaked her out yes plus also i had my own problems where we had to end up going for uh, mammograms repeatedly because they kept well some women have thick tissue and i'm one of those privileged women that has thick tissue and they kept trying to judge what was going on and they couldn't make up their mind and they finally decided to rule it out and I'm one of those rare cases that I have to go back every six months instead of once a year to have that done, so. Right, right. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not really sure what's going on. I got some people telling me that uh, the Facebook Live is freezing. That, you know, nothing I can do about that. Um, it's, it's running. I mean, <laughs> I don't know why it would be freezing or anything, but uh, yeah, that's why I've I'm, I'm been stressing, telling everybody go to youtube subscribe to youtube youtube does not fail so um <clears throat> let's see i don't know i may just uh it keeps stopping and starting well yeah i'm not really sure why it keeps saying the signals weak on your phone why is a signal weak i don't know Oh, well, then all of a sudden it jumps up and then it's going like crazy. And then it freezes. Yeah, I don't know. Um, go ahead and bring it to me. Okay. I'm going to take a look at it and see what's going on with that. But uh, we are going to be uh, talking to... Uh, Somebody's ringing. We're going to be talking to uh, Mike pretty soon. He uh, has a book out, which is kind of cool. I have no idea what the name of the book is. Um, because it's down here on the floor and Paul is trying to go grab my phone so um, pull the thing up there you go disconnect it bring it over here let's see what's going on with this thing the it, one you keep getting erased, it should out. not be doing this and I don't know why so I'm gonna kill this all right <clears throat> Uh, let's see what's going on here. See if we it. Technology. I don't know what the heck's going on. Uh, I'm going to delete it because it was horrible. There's no use to having it on here. Uh, delete. 
So, um, anyway, when we have issues with Facebook, I'm not going to worry about it because it's going to be uh, live on uh, YouTube. So, if anything goes wrong, I can just go ahead and post the YouTube link and you guys can watch it there. But let me uh, take a look here and find out what's going on. I mean, I'm on my cellular here. I should not have any issue whatsoever with uh, the connection. I have no idea why it's even stating that it's bad. Um, <clears throat> I know we've had some issues with... Uh, <sighs> well, I mean, Rodney is on right now on YouTube. And are we having any problems there, Rodney? Everything peachy keen, smooth as ever? So... Yeah, um, it's give me a, again. I'm trying. So I'm going to let Paula talk here for a little bit while I uh, do this. So uh, I'm going to see if I can get this back up and running. So I'm going to have her kind of talk about what she wants to talk about when she uh, talks to Mike. So let me do that real quick. Well, okay, while we're still talking, like we said, we've already talked about the cancer scare and everything like that. Um, not to throw off on any other things, but of course we're going to remind we do have Mike and Jeffrey on tonight. Um, um, we're also having our new uh, episodes are coming out October 31st, which we'll push a little more on that later on into the show. Uh, and we're fixing to get ready to go to a location on the 20th and the guy that we're going to be going to location is going to be our second guest tonight which is Jeffrey I'm um, also going to let you know about the haunted bourbon if you all are planning to be in New Orleans at the end of this month on the 26th, 27th and 28th uh, he's trying to get through sorry Get your tickets for that. The premiere of the very first episode of the Paranormal Journeys into the Unknown is planned to be there. Uh, and premiering our first episode. And let's see what else have we got going on. I got my cheat sheet over here. Um, where's all my other stuff go that I had on here? Oh, wait a minute. I hit the wrong keys. I have my cheat sheets. Where did my cheat sheets go? Oh, here we go. Like I said, we got the tickets for the Haunted Bourbon. Uh, they're still up for sale. Also, uh, with it being the month of October, I know this is a side camp little thingy, but have everybody heard about the Applebee special that they're doing for this month. I laughed when I read about it. What Applebee special? Applebee's is doing margaritas for a dollar. Right. Awesome. I was like, so the whole month of October you can go in and I don't know what size the margaritas are, but they're doing margaritas for a dollar. It's a, it's a customer appreciation month. So that would be cool and kind of interesting, you know. A dollar margaritas. Okay, well, I'm back up. And of course, as everybody knows, oh, uh, really? I'm talking. No I was just no trying to figure air. out what was going on. No dead air whatsoever. None. And uh, anyway, make a long story short, we've got uh, that going on. Uh, on the Applebee's fun evening. Um, also, there's another controversy conversation going on. I've heard about this. I don't know if your state that you're living in that's doing this. Of course, we live in the state of Kentucky. And, uh, we, uh, they're changing some things in controversy on this. I don't know what my personal opinion about this is just yet. But, um, the Kentucky governor has decided 
to encourage students to bring Bibles to school. What is your opinion about that? That is like a pro and con kind of question thing going on. And uh, some states are adapting to that. Other states are not. So I'm just curious if uh, you be one of those... Uh, I'm curious what your opinion is on all that. So, uh, also we are going to have our uh, round table this afternoon with our, our free will, or later on tonight. We're going to have our round table question. Does anybody remember what last week's question was? I believe our last week question's on the table over here. What is some of the best evidence you put forth that a debunker still tries all they could to debunk? So that's a question that we're still bringing on forth through. If anybody wants to answer that question, they can. I feel like I'm riding a microphone. Okay. All right. Are I don't know. Are up and going? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to refresh over here. Yeah, it looks like it's it's good now. So we'll Okay, we're back up and going. Yep. Well, we're kind of sort of we're frozen. Are you freaking serious with me? Let's see what happens. Yeah, there's something going on with our internet. I tell you what, folks, I am dumping Facebook Live. That's it. Facebook Live has just Live uh, video has interrupted. Yeah, forget it. I'm not I'm not, Facebook Live is history. We're not going to do it anymore. This is ridiculous. We have a full signal. We have 150 megabits connection. Um I have cellular, so I have no idea why it's not working, so I'm not going to worry about it. It's perfect on uh YouTube, so we're just going to stick to YouTube. Well, it's I don't know. So I'm not going to worry about it. Well, we're moving now. So, anyway, um, we got about four minutes. We're going to go ahead and contact our first guest, which is uh, Mike Resecker. And uh, we're going to go ahead and talk about his book that is down there, which I can't see what it's called. What is it called? Oh, a cheat sheet here. Hold something on. Paranormal, second edition or second something like edition. that. It looks really, really cool, whatever it is. So. Haunted Road Media, and it's called The Encounters with the Paranormal, book two. There you go. I wonder what book one was. Just kind of curious, because, yeah. I I'm not going to worry about it, folks. I'm going to delete the Facebook Lives, because it's, it's just not working. So, we're going to stick with uh, YouTube, and uh, hopefully we will get all of our... Uh, people uh signing up with youtube because that's what i have been stressing for people to do because that way you don't have to worry about facebook freezing up on you um so there you have it we are going to be continuing the rest of this show on youtube so i'm going to uh, basically share this link so y'all can see it. I'm going to tag our two guests in it. So that way uh, you guys can keep up with it. Give me a second here. Um, Don't forget to tag me. I'm going to tag everybody in it. So give me a second here. I'm trying to do three things all at once. All right, here we go. I'm going to tag Mike. And I'm going to tag Jeffrey. I'm going to tag me. And I'm going to tag Paula. And I'm going to say... The show will continue on YouTube. Facebook. Yes, it's freezing up on Facebook. It is horrible. Crapped out. 
So there you guys go. Uh, if you're looking at the Facebook page, you're going to see the post. And uh, that's what we're going to do. We are going to continue to show on YouTube. That's why we like to double up on things. You know, you've got your first option and your second option. Well, we're not going to sit there and totally bomb the whole show due to Facebook being stupid. So we double up. So we actually have YouTube running also. So Facebook doesn't work go over to YouTube. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give Mike here a call and uh, we'll get this show on the road. Give me a second. So he's got a really cool book there. I'd like to uh, read some of those stories in there, you know. Yeah, I can. So I did a rush through for the fact I just got the book a few hours ago. Hello. Hey, Mike. How are you doing this evening? I'm well, doing pretty well. How you doing, Gavin? Uh, hanging in there. Hanging in there. We had some issues with Facebook Live, so we dumped it. So <laughs> at least we oh, I have. Know, I saw. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, at least we have YouTube Live. I mean, we go ahead and double up. So we have two. Uh, formats running one fails hey we got another one to, right behind so at least there the go. show goes Sounds on good. <laughs> so how are you doing mike oh doing pretty well you know keeping busy of course <laughs> so i've got so i finally got a copy of your book i got it like six hours ago yes i did a lot of rush reading but um <laughs> But I was, uh, I, I'm very fascinated with the book, and uh, what made you think, uh, or got the idea of collecting stories to put this book together? Which book do you have? Because I have eight books. It's The Encounter <laughs> with the Paranormal 2 is what I've got. Oh, okay. All right. Well, very good. That's the most recent one. Number three is going to be coming out this month. Um, basically, yeah, um, a few years ago with uh with the first encounters with the paranormal book um it was just kind of a uh idea that cropped up because you know a, a lot of people had been coming to me with um with their stories about you know, experiences that they had had whether it was um at a conference that i was at uh, through social media they were emailing me whatever it was and you know, just sharing their experiences and uh, one of the humbling things about it all was that they kept you know, thanking me for helping them to realize that they weren't crazy, that, you know, they were, they were thanking me for sharing my experiences and what have you. And so it just kind of occurred to me, well, okay, so people are, um, you know, realizing that they are having these experiences just by me sharing, you know, what I've experienced. Well, wouldn't, wouldn't it be even better if we had all these other people, you know, that are coming to me with their stories share their experiences as well in one collective book so that, you know, as we're spreading around this information, you know, people are looking at it like, well, okay, Mike had this experience and oh, this other person had an experience and oh, there's another person over here that had an experience. Like, you know, there's something legit going on here. So um, that was kind of the, uh, the inspiration for uh, the series. Interesting. What got you into the paranormal? Well, uh, you know, I had a uh, experience when I was a uh, when I was a kid. Um, and there's a number of things that got me into the paranormal, but you know, first and foremost was a uh, was a shadow person experience that I had when I was a kid. Uh, I was about eight or nine years old and woke up in the middle of the night, and the corner of my room was um, you know this tall, you know, just figure of a person, but you couldn't see any details. It was just all black and dark and. Um, it approached me, and it did something really odd. It, it took my arms and across my arms across my body for whatever crazy reason, and then it ran off down the hallway and into the linen closet. Oh, so wow. um, that was really my first experience that you know, you know kind of told me, hey, there's um, you know there's something more going on in the world than just what we see. And uh, I had another. Uh, brief shadow person experience when I was uh, 13 years old. It uh, wasn't a full figure, but it was something that was kind of wispy that was moving about our house that we had just moved into um, in Ohio at that time. And then, um, you know, I was inspired by some different things like uh, uh, some books by Hans Holzer and, um, you know, 
honestly, I was inspired by the Amityville Horror. When I read that book, I was just like, you know, I want to go there and, you know, find out what really happened there um, rather than, you know, getting scared of the book. Right. And then when I was 15, um, you know, I had my first little paranormal investigation, even though I didn't realize that's what I was doing. A, a friend of mine and I were helping out another friend you know, trying to figure out what was going on in her bedroom. And so, you know, it's kind of all these things that, um, you know, came together to set me on this path. I tell you what, I do want to go to uh, Amityville. Just don't know when we can actually do it. <laughs> Sounds like a really cool place to go to. <laughs> so what was some of the most interesting... Well, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry? No, what were you going to say? Um, I... It's fine. What's the question? I was fixing to ask you, I said, if all the stories that were given to you, was any of them fascinating enough to go visit or to check them out for real? Well, a lot of the stories that that I've written are experiences that I've had or places that I've visited. Um, you know, some of the, uh, you know, of course, I was inspired to go to some of those places by other stories that, that I had read. Um, you know, I could throw out like trans out again, you know, lunatic asylum, um, you know, uh, stone lying in is one, you know, I'd read about before going, mm -hmm. um, you know, places like that. So, you know, I guess you could say that, you know, somewhere along the way I come across information and read about it and then, you know, visit some of these locations or, you know, I get invited out to something like, you know, and, uh, Donna, my, significant other invited me out to the goldenrod showbo and you know that's kind of set me on the on the path for um investigating there so there's there's a lot of different things that kind of put me in these situations gotcha so um have you ever been scratched or or hit or <laughs> at any of these locations or I haven't got to read all the pleasures of reading in your books. I don't know if you had talked about any of those in your books yet, but I did, like I said, dissect this one a little bit for us tonight. Yeah, in um, in that particular book, um, the physical interaction that I'd had was uh, it was on the Golden Rod Show, but it was with Annie, um, and it wasn't you know anything you know, malicious like that uh, where it was a scratch or a hit or anything like that um, I really haven't had and I've been on hundreds of investigations I've had all kinds of experiences and um, you know very very few of them have ever been negative um, but as far as like a physical interaction in that particular book um, and actually I just it's kind of funny I just <laughs> posted this uh, this story the other day on my blog on mikerickstecker.com it's kind of I'm doing like a haunted blog for for October, and um, with Annie, she's a, uh, a young woman that had been there on the uh, on the Goldenrod, and uh, her father worked there, and she wanted to become an actress and all of this stuff. Um, she was in love with the uh, with one of the young captains on the on the boat. And um, she and her father got into an argument. She ran off the boat into St. Louis because it was docked there um, on the Mississippi River uh, in St. Louis. She ran off into the city, and the next time that she was found, she was floating alongside the boat dead. So um, oh, wow. you know, nobody ever came. Yeah, nobody ever came up with a reason as to uh, you know what truly happened to her except obviously she was she was murdered she met with some sort of foul play right um or at least it seemed that way um so she's on the boat and you know when I, my first time that i was ever on there um walked into the lobby area and you know i i was alone for a little bit and i thought somebody else was with me i thought it was female couldn't confirm anything um and then it kind of went about it business and we kept investigating throughout the night um, but later on in the um, like a dining area and there's dance floor and all that uh -huh. and I felt like somebody was you know playing with my ears and playing with my hair mm -hmm. um, and you know I was telling this to Shana what was going on she's like oh that's that's probably Annie <laughs> and then she says well you know Annie if you if you really like you know Mike if you like his ear 
you know, why don't you go ahead and blow in it? And all of a sudden I felt this puff of air in my ear. Um, so you and had then, a, so we got a good so laugh out of a, that. So you had a flirting ghost. <laughs> yeah. We yeah, have. yeah, kind of flirtatious, kind of playful. So yeah, nothing, you know, nothing diabolical, no, no scratches or anything like that. So that was definitely more playful. Yeah, we got Daisy so Gray. Se- we got Daisy Gray, seventy-four, in uh, YouTube chat said that Annie blew in your ear, and maybe things will change once he starts investigating with me on a regular basis. I get touched a lot. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's Shauna. <laughs> yeah, hi Shauna. That we is see you. Shana. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the the thing is, she and I are kind of separated right now. She lives in Illinois. I live in Ohio. So it's um, it, it's a little bit of a um, challenge um, <laughs> as far as that's concerned. I mean, we we get together um, as often as we can and investigate. We you know we just posted um, a great video of our investigation in Vandalia, uh, Illinois, mm-hmm. where Sean has had a lot of. Um, uh, interesting connections with a with a young boy there, and that story is going to be published in the upcoming Encounters with the Paranormal three, which will be out here in the next couple of weeks. All right. Well, I know you guys been doing uh, a lot of uh, 360 uh, investigation, which are really cool. Uh, I've enjoyed some of the videos that you guys have done. Thanks. Um, yeah, it's you know new technology that we're trying to implement into our investigations because you know you can see all the way around in a room, right? And so, you know, you usually when you know we're set up, you know, we have a camera or two pointed in specific directions, and a lot of times you see all the time, you know, on different videos where it's like, oh, I heard something over there, right. but it's in like a different direction than the way you have the camera pointed. So you know, mm-hmm. there's this swinging around of the camera, and you're looking off into this other direction now where you heard something, but whatever it was is, you know, gone. It, it no longer exists. But with the 360 camera, it'll pick up whenever that happens. So, um, yeah, we have three, I think, 360 videos out there right now. Oh, okay. And so we're going to be doing uh, a bit more of that. I just was at the Ferry Plantation in uh, Virginia mm-hmm. here just this past weekend. I did some 360 work there. So that'll get posted here within the next few weeks. We use uh, our 360 camera for the, we call it the paranormal uh, surveillance system. So what we do is we place our 360 camera on top of the uh, DR70D, uh, 701D, which is a six track digital recorder. We place it on top of there and then we branch four XLR microphones off to four different rooms. And we have a camera facing that uh, recorder so we can actually see which uh, mic fluctuates with the most uh, audio activity. And then when we go back and look at the uh, you know evidence, we just look at the camera and find out exactly which room it came from, see if it captured anything. Oh yeah, sounds like a fantastic setup, definitely. Oh yeah, well, I mean, we've actually caught a few things. Um, really not something to write home about, but yeah, we did get some right. uh, different audio spikes and we really didn't get to see anything in the room it came from because, uh, well, I mean, with the camera and like a cross, not a cross section, but a four way intersection and you got the mics going off into the room. So if something comes out of the room, the camera would have definitely picked it up. But if it's inside the room, well, we don't get to see that. Right. Yeah, I think the most significant thing that we've picked up with uh, so far, I mean, there's been a couple of little things, like, you know, we did hear a you know, knock in a room, mm-hmm. and and you're looking on the video, and it's like, okay, there's the room it came out of, and eh, they didn't really say anything. But there was one where um, I had put the, uh, we had the, or we had the camera set up on a, uh, it's a coffee table in a room, and Shauna was uh, sitting on the couch. I left the room because I was going into a uh, another room to grab something real quick. And mm-hmm. we had a light on, it was on a lamp in a room across the hall. So I walked out, started going down the hallway, and, you know, I call out, you know, did, you know, did the lights just go off for a minute? You know, that, that one that was there. Um, Shauna hadn't, re- she didn't see it. Um, I was down the hall, and so I'm just kind of picking it up out of my periphery. What is that? I thought the lights went off for it. It was like for like a three seconds. But sure enough, on that 360 cam, because of the way it's designed, it did pick up 
on that light, it did go off for like a brief second as I was walking. You see me walk into the hall and that light goes out for a brief second, pops back on. Um, so yeah, it's moments like that where we wouldn't normally have caught it and it just would have been a back and forth between Shauna and I where I was saying, well, I, you know, I thought I saw it go off and she would have said, well, I did it. And we just would have agreed that, well, who knows what that happened. But we, because we had the 360 cam set up, we were able to actually capture, yeah, Mm-hmm. You know, that light did uh, pop off for a second. Whether it was paranormal or not, uh, we don't know. But, you know, it's one thing that when we go back to that location, we can check out that lamp and see if there's any way that, you know, it would have been able to turn off. So, but it, it gets us like a step closer right. uh, because of, uh, because it was picking up on all angles. Is your uh, 360 camera full spectrum or is it just normal? No, it's just normal. It's a 360 fly. That's what, that's what we got. Yeah, 360 fly is our uh, okay, sponsor. Cool. We're actually uh, negotiating a deal with them to start making full spectrum cameras. Oh, wow. You can start making them? Cool. Yeah. Because uh, we use uh, 360 fly. Um, gosh, we've been using that for almost a year. Uh, we got their first uh, 4K camera. And. Um, I went ahead and told him, I go, you know what would be really cool if we could actually, you know, I told him about our paranormal surveillance system, and I said it would be really cool Mm -hmm. if we could see in the dark. And he's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, "Uh, full spectrum or infrared. We'd put the lights around the base, and that way it'll shoot off all IR, and it should be able to pick up stuff at night. And he's like, oh, hey, well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, transfer that to our engineers, and uh, we'll see if we can start working on that. So there I wouldn't go. be That'd surprised. Be cool. Yeah. So, but that was what we're gonna be working on with them. So, you got something to say? Yeah. Um, getting back yeah, to nice. the book itself. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. I get for rambling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're fine. Um, if you don't mind, I like to read one paragraph out of this book, and it kind of not just touches the situation or what is saying about the book, but I think in general, it speaks volumes not just for this one location but for any location in the world that we try to preserve in life and from that after i read this i'm gonna go into more detail i'm interested in one of the chapters in the book and i want to know if you have any more highlights you can tell me about this chapter okay which chapter is this well it's about the golden rod but i want to go ahead and read if you don't mind let me read the one paragraph and then we'll go on and proceed from this because this one paragraph kind of touched me personally for me being a historian and a researcher myself it was a jewel of the mississippi river the largest most luxurious showboat ever constructed red skeleton got his start there and other famous talents performed on its stage such as bob hope does these names ever resonate with people anymore for nearly a hundred years the golden rod provided laughter and life for thousands along the old waterway providing a means of escapism from life along the river. But now it rests on a shore, a rusting hulk repleted of its privileged grandeur. Must we allow ourselves to forget all that has come before us? That paragraph spoke volumes to me because on a personal note, I live in a town to where preservation works in some areas and preservation, they don't care anymore. And they throw away history like it's yesterday's garbage that's true and and that just you know pulled heartstrings on me with that being said tell me more about the golden rod i see where they have tried they have saved it is my understanding yeah um yeah the golden rod um there's been so much back and forth on it when i wrote that particular um article um the golden rod was basically set for uh, demolition. They were going to uh, burn it and then scrap the uh, scrap the hole. Oh, wow. um, it was temporarily saved for a little while. There was some legal back and forth last year, and it opened back up for a little while. Enough time for Shauna and I to have a uh, hand fasting on it almost a year ago. Um, but there was a flood earlier this year out there. Um, the insurance company pulled out and that caused the, uh, 
enabled the landowners to kind of swoop back in, gain control of it again, and their plan once again is to uh, destroy it. So it's just uh, really, really sad. I, it, for them, you know, it's just it's just a money thing. It's um, you know, there's this old boat sitting on their on their land. They would like to sell the land and retire, and for whatever reason, they deem that this boat is in their way of selling the land. Um, so it's it's a very very unfortunate situation, and you know, it's one of those cases where you know if you if you scrap this boat and get rid of it. Um, you're losing a significant piece of American history. This is, you know, the big boat of that era that was up and down the Mississippi and then spent decades there um, in front of the arch in St. Louis. So it's it, it's a piece of history that should be preserved, and, you know, those that are in control of it now simply don't care about the history, which is extremely, extremely sad. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of what they're doing all over in different places where they're starting to tear down historical buildings, which is really sad and pathetic. There's no reason to be tearing down all these buildings. All they have to do is just uh, develop one of those preservation groups and have someone come in there and help restore it or help, uh, you know, build it back up again. Kind of like what we want to do. There's a building out here in Paducah that we want to do that exact same thing. But uh, the city's just like, no, we we want to uh, we want to demolish it. Yeah, it's all it's not about yeah, serving your history. They're more worried about building parking lots or building the stackable right. parking lots. That is true. That, uh, it's just like a one building, and it still ticks me off to this day. We have this one building in Baduca. It's one of the very very first buildings that got built in Baduca. And basically, the building next door wanted to have a bigger building built because they were getting too small for their building. So in return, in a tax sale, they bought the building next door that was over 200 years old, one of the very first buildings that ever stood, and bought it in a tax sale. And in over one weekend they did it under nobody's recognition in the town they had it demolished and cleaned up they started on a friday wow. night and it was completely gone 100 percent by monday morning which building was that that's, wow that's the one tank that's the one building down here by the gas tanks when i tell you that that brand new building that's sitting right there right across the gas tanks yeah. like you're going to your job that's it that's where the oldest building that wow. stood in Baduca. That was established during the 18 right in 1850s or no about 1840 something it's before mccracken county became mccracken county it was part of hickman county wow it's like they stole it in the middle of the night yeah wow and it's sad that it's gotten to that point that you know nobody wants to serve reserve history and i mean it's they just want to sweep it underneath the rug and walk on Yep. Yeah, it's it's like what Sean was saying there in the chat. I'm I'm watching the chat right now, and she's <laughs> you know talking about how you know there's the, the people that want to preserve all of that you know, simply don't have the money, and the people that do have the money don't care, and that's where a, a big problem lies. You know, part of our proceeds of of the book um, that you have in your hand do go to help the Goldenrod Showboat in their efforts. Um, if the Goldenrod does. Um, it does meet the fate of being destroyed, which it looks more and more like that. Mm -hmm. um, then the proceeds will go to help because um, they're, they're going to do something with like a museum or something like that if that were to happen. Because they have a number of the artifacts off the boat, mm -hmm. so the, you know the proceeds will go to help toward that. So that's something that we're starting to do now with the encounters with the paranormal books. So that one there, volume two, goes to help the Golden Rod. The one that's coming out here in a couple of weeks goes to help the. Uh, uh, the old Mineral Springs Hotel in Alton, Illinois, because I almost met the wrecking ball last year. Yeah, we've been and there. So they were able to, to save it, but, you know, it, I mean, these, these locations, you know, and, and it's sad because, um, you know, they're, they're fewer and far between now, you know, as they keep, you know, destroying these buildings. And we're talking about one there from the 1850s that's, that's destroyed, that's gone now. I mean, there's only so many of them around, and you keep destroying them, and there's going to be nothing left. So, you know, we need to do whatever we can to try to save these places. Kind of like reminds you about the statues, doesn't it? Same thing, removing history. Yeah. 
So that's what they're doing. They're destroying historical buildings. They're removing historical statues. It's the same thing. And it's just sad. Ain't that right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, and it's it's history repeating itself. You know, mm -hmm. archaeologists look back now at some of the, you know, ancient structures in, you know, like Rome, throughout Europe, um, you know, Egypt, wherever, and they see where, you know, history was destroyed, where, you know, different buildings were looted and, yep. you know, old, you know, artifacts and architecture and all that, you know, is gone. Or they see where, you know, there's a few remnants of it, but it was destroyed and, you know, for whatever crazy reason. And, you know, the, you know, maybe there was a, you know, a, you know, an invader that came in or maybe it was, you know, some, you know, religion that came through and decided that, well, they wanted to, you know, change it up over here or whatever it was. Um, you know, there's, you know, the archaeologists now are like, wow, it's so, you know, it's so sad that we no longer have that, that these things were done. And yet we're still doing it today. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. And it's like they don't even see that. Nope. They never see uh, history repeating itself. It's just, uh, they just feel it's something new and quote unquote unthought of. We just had something weird happen here. We had something fly off of her laptop and hit the floor. And <laughs> there's no breeze in here. We're like burning up with these lights. So it's kind of weird. Yeah. Well, we do live in a haunted house. Yeah. That's true. We do. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. <laughs> All right. Well, um, go ahead and tell our listeners and viewers where they can uh, contact you and also uh, pick up your many, many, many books that you have uh, published out there. Yeah, well, you can find me at MikeRicksecker.com or at HauntedRoadMedia.com. Uh, we can also watch all the videos and everything on the Haunted Road Media YouTube channel. And... Um, you know, where else Amazon you can find the books as well so a lot of things coming up like I said we have the uh, the new book that's coming out here in a couple of weeks and um, you know, we run the Edge of the Rabbit Hole live stream show on uh, Tuesday nights 9.30pm so come check that out as well so a lot of stuff that we're doing and of course it's a very very busy October so yeah keep up with what we're go what's going on there's a, there's a lot <laughs> are you uh, going to be going to uh, any events like any uh, Paracons or Comic Cons or anything like that Oh, yeah, I have AuthorCon in, um, how do you pronounce it, Oneida, <laughs> New York, um, that's uh, October 21st, and then, oh, I, I can't believe I did, I'm about to forget to mention this, October 28th is the book release event um, at North Springs Hotel, uh, there in Alton, Illinois, it's raining, and is the, uh, is the store that's putting it on. Um, they actually have a uh, psychic fair and everything going on at the same time, so we're kind of piggybacking on that um, with the book release event. Mm -hmm. So we'll have the new book out there, of course, featuring everything from the Mineral Springs Hotel and a bunch more paranormal experiences and encounters from all kinds of people. So, um, yeah, that's going to be a great weekend. That's October 28th. Okay. I think I, I remember, do you remember seeing some of his books at the Mineral yes. Springs? Because we actually went there I think I saw two weekends two, ago. I, thought I, seen, I think I saw two of them. I mean, I saw some Troy Taylor, mm -hmm. and I saw I, Bruce, I saw one Bruce Klein, and I mm -hmm. saw, I think I did see you guys, uh, at least a couple of your books there. And uh, Yeah, yeah, I have some books there in the store, yep. <laughs> yeah, we've got to go through our uh, audio evidence to see if we captured anything, because uh, Brian Murray, which is a friend of mine with uh, Riverbend Paranormal, was there at 7 yeah. p.m. that no night, much. and he got an awesome EVP. So I was like, wow, okay, awesome. So we need to uh, check out and see if we got anything. I mean, I kind of liked the place. It was really cool when we went on our tour, uh, going down to the pool room, which was really cool. Uh, we did hear something oh, yeah. like a noise in the back room, uh, toward the back corner. It sounded like something like threw a pebble and then it went into the pool. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely some interesting noises down there. We've heard, you know, sighs and uh, voices and, you know, all kinds of different things down there in that pool. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, all righty. We do appreciate you being on the show and talking about your books and telling all our viewers uh, where they can contact you and, of course, uh, buy your books. And um, it was great having you on the show. Very informative. I'm going to probably look into getting a few more of these books. I'd like to see the first one, The Encounters with the Paranormal, Volume 1. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, I thank you very much for having me on the show. Greatly appreciate it, Gavin. All right, not a problem. You have yourself a good evening. Enjoy your night. You too. Take care. All right, bye-bye. All right, and you too, Paul. Bye-bye. All right, well, there you go. We were talking with Mike Resecker. He is a uh, published uh, author, and we were talking about his book called The Encounters with the Paranormal, Volume 2. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and set up our system here to give Jeffrey Vaughn a call, and we are going to talk about the Crime and Punishment Museum, which uh, we actually are going to be uh, doing a... Uh, a meet and greet there which is going to be kind of cool we'll be there october what 21st i think it is 21st right uh the 20 yeah the 21st and we're leaving here on the 20th oh yeah that's right so, uh... that's right i forgot about that but we have a meet and greet from uh, 2 p.m to 4 p.m so come Come on on out to the Crime and Punishment Museum, and you'll see us out there. Paranormal Society. Good evening, Jeffrey. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well, Gavin. How are you, sir? All right. We were just talking about our meet and greet at the Crime and Punishment Museum, uh, October 21st, between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. Yeah, I just uh, was just watching that on the YouTube live stream, and uh, we are super excited to have you guys come down from Kentucky. Oh, yeah, we can't wait. wait. Uh, what? I said, yeah, we can't <laughs> wait. <laughs> yeah, and Paula, you know, I want you to know that you are awesome because I know that you do a lot of research, and, you know, we hope that the Crime and Punishment Museum will live you know live up to your expectations that's what i'm hoping for um i've been looking up of course i i do my you know i do my own little research along with stuff and it was funny i went across a lot of people who writes things about locations and everything but i had ran across this one page and it described the crime and punishment and i never thought about describing the crime and punishment museum this way and I gotta read you something, this is kinda cute. The Rootin' Tootin's House Grove of the 19th Century Wild West has their fans, but in the 20th century, executions, the jails of the Dixie has them all. So Georgia's only Turner County Jail, now the Crime Punishment Union has much to offer. Absolutely, and you know, Someone that facility that was built in uh, 1906. And they performed their first execution at that location by hanging uh, in 1907. And uh, there were some, you know, undocumented executions that allegedly occurred there, according to the older town people and the legends and the rumors and that, you know, that goes with that. But um, there, there was a Ku Klux Klan outfit that was found in the attic oh, wow. that oh, belonged wow. to one of. Uh, it, it's on display in the museum downstairs and um, you know and it was found in the attic uh, it belonged to one of the sheriffs that was uh, overseeing the facility and you know they uh, you know that dates back to the early 1900s so that goes to show you the the history of the south unfortunately you know it it does involve the Ku Klux Klan Mm -hmm. and the, the sheriffs and the deputies and the people in that area were, you know, muchly affiliated with that organization. And, you know, that's a, that's a dark part of our history. But, again, that's why uh, we display that at the museum um, to show people the history, you know, of the horrible things that occurred there. Um, in that, you know, not only in that county, but the surrounding counties. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we, uh, you know, we, we would love if you guys, you know, we don't want to tell you, you guys are coming on October 21st and you're going to do a full investigation of this facility. Oh, yeah. Yes, And sir. we welcome that. 
and we're excited about that. And, you know, we're reaching out to some of our local people, um, you know, and, uh, you know, the local surrounding communities to come out and meet and greet you guys between two and four, mm-hmm. uh, on the 21st of October. And, uh, I'm working on that. I think there's going to be a, a pretty good turnout. Um, you know, and if not, I'll be there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and uh, we're going to have a very special guest that's going to give us a tour. Yep, his name is uh, Shane. And, uh, you know, and he's an awesome guy. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into his background for privacy reasons, right. but um, he's going to show you around the place, and we're going to love to have him do that for you. That's great. That's we're, we're looking forward to it. Yep. Um. Hey, I got sidetracked, so I had a question in my mind, and now it popped out. Well, that's not good. I do that to people, Paula. I do that. Don't worry about <laughs> it. I do that to people. Um, I get them confused. Now, for people that doesn't realize how old this jail is, this jail, is my understanding, existed when Teddy Roosevelt was president in the uh, of, in the office. Wow, that's, that's, old. that's, that's, that's old. that. That is correct, and it, it went all the way to Bill Clinton. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. So it was an operation for many years. And, you know, the last standing sheriff that was at the facility, mm-hmm. um, the inmates were being rambunctious one night. You know, they were raising a lot of noise and just being really rude and stomping and shut, you know, beating on the cell walls and all that. Again, this facility is set up where the jail is upstairs. And the wife and the sheriff's wife lived downstairs. Oh, wow. And all this noise was coming down. So the sheriff went upstairs, and, you know, this is in 1993, and he's, you know, informing the inmates to knock it off. And uh, they just got more rowdy, and they started flooding the cells, burning sheets, you know, setting fires in the place. And they ruined the place and all the water damage, you know, and the stink that came down from the toilets, you know, they overflowed, you know, overflooded the toilets. (laughs) And the, uh, and the sheriff just said, screw this. And he locked them all down for seven days and left them there completely alone. He left and, uh, the, the state police got involved and they came in and removed all the inmates from that facility. Huh. Now that facility still has the uh, the death row, death chamber, hanging gallow where they used to hang. You know the the last person who was uh, executed there was Miles Cribb. That's uh, M I L E S C R I B B, and that was on September the 11th of uh, 1914, oh. and uh, that's the last documented hanging. And so, again, the old people in the town said that many people, well, several people, were drugged into the jail in the middle of the night, and they did justice, you know, without the court system. So a little bit of their own version of kangaroo court. <laughs> kangaroo? Yeah, apparently they did some hangings, you know, without any judicial system yeah. involved. I've never heard of kangaroo court, but okay. Yeah, they, that, that is a slang that I was, I had a, my father was a police officer and he talked about uh, money was always tied through certain areas in society and it took care of taking care of going to the court system and they just took care of certain just things without. Did it on their own. Yeah. And they called it kangaroo court. Well, in a matter round way, yeah. Huh. Weird. You know, I remember the romper room. When I was a kid, yeah. I do too. <laughs> I see Joey and Jeffrey. <laughs> I used to, Michael. you know, I would wait for they would call my name <laughs> on the mirror. Yep. You know, and I and I would be excited. Romper room. And that only Romper happened, Day. I think, once. <laughs> you run up to the screen like, you see me? You see me? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go, Gavin. Oh man. Well, he didn't ever say my name because you know. Not a, I guess that's not well, a normal name. I don't name. think your name is as common as Tom and Jerry and right? Mary and Sue. Right? Yep. I was just like, oh man, he never would call me. He don't like me. So hey, I, but you know what? I wanted, I wanted to, uh, since we're on the air here, I wanted to uh, 
to thank you, Gavin uh, and Paula, um, for you know everything that you guys are doing. You're you're bringing you're you're bringing information about the Crime and Punishment Museum, mm-hmm. and that place is phenomenal. And you guys are going to have an awesome time. Again, you know, all I'm going to do is pretty much let Shane uh, show you around the place. I'm not going to give you any information about what happens where. Okay. In fact, I'm going to turn the key over to you guys so you guys can walk yourself inside the jail. Oh, wow. Oh, heck. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah. We you lo- guys will have full access All right. of, the, well, of the facility. Well, we've and got... so no one will disturb you. And I'll be there to perform security, of course, mm-hmm. but uh, the building is yours. For All the night. Right. Well, we appreciate that. Uh, it's going to be cool. I mean, this will be our mm-hmm. second jail we've been locked in. The other one we couldn't get out either. Yeah, that one we kind of got ourselves locked in, and we were worried because we couldn't figure out how to get ourselves back out. <laughs> yeah. Our, uh... Well, there are cells that, you know, the, the cells do close, and, you know, the mechanisms latch the oh, doors wow. in place. So there is that, you know, that um, feeling of being locked in a facility you know locked in a jail if you want it but you know you don't have to close the door if you don't want to gavin so if i lock her in a cell she's locked in for the duration of the night um unless you pull the mechanism yeah ah that's gonna be fun (laughs) hey but you know what (laughs) tina flurry with uh ghost life Uh uh-huh paranormal investigations out of florida yeah she had her husband locked down on death row Oh, wow. And we gave her the key to lock the cell door, you know, to the jail, and she misplaced the key. Oh, oh no. on purpose? And we were, no, not on purpose. Oh, wow. Feverently, we were looking for this key for like 20 minutes. Oh, wow. And he's on the walkie-talkie, let me out of here, and we're trying to explain to him we're looking for a key. Oh no! And uh, oh man, that's messed up. But yeah, we did find the key, and uh, we were able to under, rescue under the soap. But you know, they're correctional officers out of Florida, right? And they were tempting fate by being in the facility in a jail, a prison. Uh, you know, um, by being by being caught. And being in there, man, I, right. I think it's crazy. Well, I do know one thing that I'm going to go ahead and do, and she thinks I'm totally nuts, but I'm going to lay in that casket and do an evening. Oh my God! Session. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll I'll provide you guys with a clean sheet because <laughs> you know that. Oh uh, God! Listen, Paula. Listen. <laughs> This thing has uh, mildew in it because you know of water damage and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But. Yeah, you're welcome to lay in the coffin, and I'll I'll put a sheet. And we've had about what three people that done that in the past. One guy, he even put the uh, the lid on top of him with a K2 meter inside. He was getting huge hits, and he says, "Leave me alone. I'm I'm okay in here. I'm comfortable." Yeah. <laughs> and we thought he was weird. Oh, wow. But yeah, if you're willing to lay in the coffin, Gavin. Uh, more power to your man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I told him. I said I was never going to lay in one of those until the day <laughs> that I had to. <laughs> I, I figured what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay in the coffin and I'm going to have uh, two angles of cameras on me. And yeah, I was thinking about shutting it. But she's going to be sitting on the outside and we're going to have a connect camera down there to see if anything is uh, around me. And I'm going to bring the dance to you down there. You know, the unique thing about your guys' investigation is uh, is this. It's just you two. Yep. Or, yeah. And, and uh, your producer. Nope. And, just us um, two. Mm-hmm. Huh? Nope. Just us two. Oh, goodness. Well, it's going to be even more terrifying because once you lock yourself in that jail, mm-hmm. um, you're in there with a... Uh, 40 plus spirits Ooh. Cool. and we had uh tina marie out of florida you know psychic tina marie right right she came and did a live podcast from uh from the crime and punishment museum that was on august 17th of uh 2016 mm-hmm. we had like 200 people showing up 
Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, it, it was awesome. And, um, <laughs> and, you know, and she went through the facility. And her staff, after the, after the podcast, her staff went through the facility. Okay. One lady got bruised. Oh, wow. I mean, grab marks. Ooh. And just so you know, uh, Stephanie Teen Langston, she's on my friends list. Uh -huh. uh, her husband is a former police officer uh, in the local area where I'm at. Mm -hmm. uh, they came down, and her breast was grabbed. Oh, wow. Paula? Yeah, I hear. Yeah. Well, um, one thing I was going to go ahead and ask you is, um, do you have anybody on your team that would like to be interviewed on camera about some of the experiences that they actually had um, inside the Crime and Punishment Museum? <sighs> Or do you know of someone that would be uh, willing to do that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, uh, my staff or visitors would be more than happy to come and do an interview. Okay. All right. And we have ample people that have had <laughs> crazy experiences. In fact, you know, Stephanie Teen Langston, I can have, I can ask her mm -hmm. and, uh, and if she's willing to come, uh, that'd be great. Um, he's one of my ambassadors. Um, his first time ever coming there as a guest. And uh, he had, uh, I said, we were doing an EVB session next to the coffin up in the men's section. I'm asking the spirits, would you go down and touch? Because there were some women down in the basement. Now, the basement's a different story. Right. And I don't, I don't know if you guys are prepared for that, but oh yeah, the basements we, we are okay. Good, <laughs> good. Um, the basement's different. Um, it's just different all the way around. It's just a different thing that's going on down there. We had some women down in the basement, and we were doing EVP session upstairs in the men's cell block mm -hmm. on the third floor, and um, I said, "Would you go down?" and touch one of the women on the shoulders to let them know that you're you're here speaking to the spirits and uh benjamin clance was coming into the men's section doorway uh -huh. and you guys will see that when we get there and i think that's a portal by the way oh wow so much has happened in that doorway um i asked benjamin uh i asked and then uh, benjamin came through the door and then he uh, comes running around the corner, and and he's a big, big dude. Right. I mean, he's huge, big guy. I mean, very intimidating. Mm -hmm. But he come running around the corner and said he had something that said no in his ear, that said the word no in his ear. Huh. And he looked around, no one was there, and he boogied around the corner, and he verified, hey, I just had something uh, whisper no in my ear. And he was freaked out. He's a big dude. And we've had some big guys. I got, you know, uh, Roger English. He's mm -hmm. about six foot four, uh, every bit of 350 pounds. And he's the head of the security. Anyway, he was in the basement and he's been touched twice in the basement. Oh, wow. On his shoulder. Huh. And he now he won't. In fact, you know, <laughs> I hate to say this, but he hasn't been on an investigation since. I oh. think you know, I I just don't know what's going on with him, but um, he just doesn't want to go back in the basement. That's his thing. Right. And he told me he's not going back in the basement. <laughs> it takes a lot to actually try to to uh, scare us. I mean, we have we we both been touched pushed we both been scratched um i've been waiting to get slapped i haven't got slapped yet unless she does it in the dark <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah um we were we were totally locked into the uh, hartford city jail and their doors don't work they are completely sealed but there is a section that's down 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 below they call it the dungeon and uh, there was actually a story of a little girl that got bit. 
it just appeared out of nowhere and they have no idea where it came from or how it happened but uh they uh they still have a hanging thing in there didn't they Did yeah they have what in the jail yeah they uh, had a hanging thing in franklin yeah no no they had the uh they got the fake one outside the jail that they kind of trying to rebuild to make it look like the original right and uh, the uh, original is in pieces laying on the second floor oh that's right that's right that's right yeah. well you know what that's a good thing you got paula exactly well she's the, the historian she does all that stuff otherwise i'd be like mm, dead in the water <laughs> yeah she's you know what she's pretty cool and she's a great asset to what you guys have got going on and we're super excited to have you come down to georgia oh yeah from paducah kentucky it's gonna be my first time <clears throat> it'll be her first time down there and the other funny thing is is uh she is a die hard fried green tomatoes person and she knows that there's that little town that's about 45 minutes away from ashburn georgia that is the place where they film fried green tomatoes yeah joliet Juliet. Yep. yep. Oh, I'm sorry, Juliet. <laughs> so Juliet. Yeah, Juliet. Juliet. It's north. It's just north of Macon. It's not. It's yeah. It, and get, in fact, you guys are going to pass it when you come through. Yeah, I know. Right. But we're going to catch the upside of it on the way back. I got to stop at the cafe and at least get me a couple of fried green tomatoes just for the key, for the namesake. Right. <laughs> yep. So that's going to yeah, be really you know, interesting. And <laughs> fried green tomatoes are a big thing in the south. Oh, yes. I'm not really into that. She is. Whenever we go somewhere, she's like, I got to have fried green tomatoes. I'm like, ew. <laughs> How about, you know I'm, what? I'm, I'll tell I'm, you what. I'll tell you what. I'll bring you guys some fried, uh, <laughs> some, uh, fried livers. You like livers? Ew. Chicken livers? No, God, no. No, that's not my huh? lip. No. No, no, no. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. I can All eat right. a lot well, of many you know. southern things, but that's one thing I can't eat. Bring some fried chicken tenders. I'll be good. I can do gizzards, but I can't do livers. <laughs> You're just sick. <laughs> you know what? I got I got something better for you guys. How about Keith the Q barbecue? Ooh, yeah. Heck I yeah. can do barbecue. I can chew up some barbecue. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Barbecue. Well, awesome. guess what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give a shout out to Keith the Q. Keith Massey um, in Ashburn, Georgia. He has a local restaurant called Keith the Q barbecue. Uh -huh. And I, I'm going to treat you guys to dinner. Oh, awesome. Oh, thanks. That'd be cool. Thank you. Yeah, I'll treat you guys to dinner. And uh, don't worry about it. And it's on me. And uh, you guys are going to have a fan or phantasmic time. Right? <laughs> That's why I came up uh -huh. with that. That's why I came up with that name. I came because I was like, how are you going to come up with some name? I was like, Fantas fantastic. And I'm like, that sounds funny. Fantastic ghost. I hunters. love phantasmic. Yeah. I love it. Well, I got it from. Uh, there's, it. there's a video game called Phantasmagoria. So I just knocked off the Goria well, and kept the now Phantasmic. Now it's uh, Phantasmic Galvin. Phantasmic Galvin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just Phantasmic. Are you? <laughs> oh, man. Hey, you know what? Look, um, to all of our listeners, um, who are following? You know, I think there's a. I, I know there's at least one person that's following on this uh, on this uh, interview, and uh, maybe two. Well, and, if, uh, they can also uh, watch it at a later time too, because I know there's a lot of folks oh, uh, that are working. Yeah, you know, we're going to promote this. Oh yeah, most and definitely. We're promote this. Oh yeah. And uh, I want to say to everybody that um, Gavin Kelly and Paula um, are awesome people. You know, they've been working with us to do this investigation at the Crime and Punishment Museum for more than six months. Yep. So this is something that has been in the making for a half a year. And we are excited to have you guys come down and check out our jail. Oh, yeah. yeah. We are excited, too, and can't wait to actually step foot in there. <clears throat> and, you know, I think, you know, we're going to have some... You know, I you know I was just looking on the page today when we were doing the promotion for the meet and greet. Um, I had one person tag like six people, and I started looking there. You know, we're getting a lot of tags, so you guys will probably you know be going to meet some people from Georgia. Right, right. 
That's cool. And, uh, and that's a great thing, yeah. Because we're really friendly people down here. Love to meet some Georgia folks. Right? Well, yeah. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Absolutely. Well, Georgia is a home of some Georgia peaches. Right. <laughs> well, Hey, you know what? And when you get here, I want you guys to try the, uh, you know, the boiled peanuts. Okay. Oh, yeah. Georgia. Y'all never tried those, have you? Mm-mm. Uh-uh. I mean, I've no. done the, I've done the uh-huh. German roasted because we have these little vendors that come in at Christmas. Oh, German roasted is awesome. Are we you have, kidding? We have those little vendors that come in in our mall that comes. I don't know where they come from, but they only set up at Christmas time and they sell the German roasted stuff and the the Australian this and that. And right. It's yeah. like we only get the foreign domestic stuff in our area when Christmas time's here. Honey roasted is good too. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do for you guys. Okay. All right, look. You guys are going to pass a lot of cotton fields because <laughs> <laughs> Georgia is uh, the state of cotton, and, and y'all know that, and peaches as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to pick you guys some fresh cotton oh, okay. that's got the seeds in it. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah, Weird. I got a place right down my, it's about a, a mile from my house. That's a whole field of cotton, and I'm going to... Uh, Pick you guys some uh, Georgia cotton. It's still got the seeds in it. It's really coarse. And it's, uh, you can imagine if if you had to pick that for 12 hours a day, it would tear your hands up. Right. I just want y'all to fill it so you can fill a part of Georgia history. Would that be okay with y'all? Yeah. That would be perfect. That sounds fine. cool. But here, here, here's one thing. I'm a California boy, and I did not know there were seeds in cotton. Really? Yeah, really. We don't have cotton oh, in yeah. California. It's, it's, you know, when you when you grab the cotton off the uh, bush, um, it's very coarse and it's very seedy, you know. And remember, back in the day, they had to, you know, pick that for 12 hours a day and they would tear their fingers up. Oh, wow. So huh. sometimes there would be blood on the cotton. Mm. I just want y'all to remember that about the South. Wow. Well, I mean, I've I've kind of grown for the South. I mean, I've been here since. Gosh, I moved out of here uh, out of California in June of '93, and I have been out here ever since. So, I mean, I left California when I was 19. And then you moved up to Kentucky and met me. Yep, I moved up to Kentucky and met Paula, and now I'm going to be 45 in November. And we're getting married next year. Well, I hope I'm going to the wedding. <laughs> of course. I sent you an invite. <laughs> Did you get- okay, good. <laughs> All right, I'll be there. Hey, look, uh, you know, you guys are great. Thank and you. we're looking forward to having you in Georgia, all the way from Kentucky. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, to do the uh, the Crime and Punishment Museum. You guys will not be disappointed. All right. Well, we sure do appreciate it. Go ahead and tell our listeners and uh, viewers how they can uh, get in touch with you so they can come over there and do their own uh, private investigation of the Crime and Punishment Museum. Well, it's uh, called Ghost Hunts at the Crime and Punishment Museum. Um, it's a Facebook page, or you can go to Paranormal Society of Middle Georgia Facebook page. There's a link to uh, ghost hunt at the Crime and Punishment Museum, or um, just call 478-213-5785. Again, 478-213-5785. Got one last question for you before we let you go. I just have to know, I have heard through the grapevine, is there a big gigantic fire ant across the street from (laughs) y'all? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> you know, it sits right in front of the Turner County Chamber of Commerce. Oh, God. And uh, we, have a, we have a fire ant festival each year. Oh, I love um, it. <laughs> what do y'all we, yeah, do? It's huge. You know, Paula, I tell you what, I want you to sit on the fire ant, and I want to get your picture. <laughs> She's planning on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to be there, and I want to get that picture for Paula. All right. And we're going, 
I, you know what? I might even go live on Facebook to produce it. <laughs> oh, well, you know we're going to be doing Facebook Lives once we get there. Hopefully we can get a good Wi-Fi signal or a, or a cell signal. Cause that yeah, might... there, there is a Wi-Fi signal you can connect to the courthouse. Okay. Again, the courthouse was built simultaneously with the, the jail okay. in 1906. So the courthouse is still op, you know, it's still operational. Okay. They still convict criminals every day. Oh, okay. Because yeah, we I will That's do a the business. Face, uh, they convict. Yeah, I I will do a <laughs> Facebook live, and she will do a Facebook live. We'll actually do a, a walk through and uh, give our viewers uh, a glimpse inside the uh, Crime and Punishment Museum as we walk through live. So, usually what we like that'd be awesome oh, yeah. hey i just wanted to remind you that when once you get inside the jail mm -hmm. you know it is all still in concrete so your live uh broadcast will be uh digitally you know the digital breakup you'll oh. see all that okay and just so y'all know that you know it all it is concrete and still so okay the signal's not in as good as it is outside from inside okay probably what we can do is uh put another card inside our phones a 32 gig and just uh go through and record it by using a uh, recording program on our phone no. yeah i just i just wanted to point that out to you guys because you know, again, it's all concrete and still, mm -hmm. and you're inside of a jail, and, you know, but you, you, you'll be able to broadcast. Don't worry about it. We're going to make sure of that. Okay. Well, once again, we are looking forward to it, and we do thank you for being on the show tonight and telling all of our uh, listeners and viewers how they can get in touch with you, and they can go over there and uh, investigate the Crime and Punishment Museum. Museum and uh hopefully get some uh compelling evidence which we're hoping that we're gonna get when we get locked inside where we're surrounded yeah, by can I, can I point one more thing out sure. Gavin, if you don't mind yeah go ahead okay um when our uh guests come to the crime and punishment museum even though they are not seasoned investigators with you know the equipment that's needed to do the investigation we do provide some paranormal equipment for people. I mean, we have a, a FLIR TG-165. We have a couple of night vision cameras, the latest spirit box, the latest uh, K2 meters. Mm -hmm. um, we provide that for our patrons who come. Oh, wow. And, you know, and that's, that's just something that we, uh, we want people to have the best experience, and we have small crowds. Mm -hmm. We don't allow 20, 30 people in the building. Right, right. There's just no way that you could get a good, you know, sound, evidential, uh, you know, investigation if you got too many people there. So we like small crowds, right. you know, eight people, seven, eight people, something like that. You know, and we provide some of the equipment for you. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for 35 bucks a person to come and stay overnight, we don't think that's a bad deal at oh, all. That, that's a great deal. That is a, that is a great deal. I'm surprised uh, a lot of folks aren't really jumping at it. I mean, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> oh, no, we're, we, we stay booked. Uh, we're booked all the way through October, but... We just want more people to know, you know, if you if you come to Georgia, or if you're traveling through Georgia, and you want to do a ghost hunt at one of Georgia's most haunted jails, we got the equipment, we got the staff, and we got the location. And you just did your own commercial live on the air. Huh? I said you just did your own commercial live on air. Oh, that was sorry. perfect. That was I perfect. love it. That though. was perfect. I, I stand behind. I stand behind what we do, though, hundred percent. Oh yeah, I mean, that was, I think that we was have perfect. the best thing going. Yeah, you know, nobody, nobody's doing this. That's true. That is true. But uh, that was really good. I mean, that was that was perfect. All right, Gavin, Gavin and Paula, uh, thank you guys so much for uh, inviting me to your show, uh, Mike. It was wonderful listening to you and your stories and i want to check out one of your books 
so I'll be in touch. Yeah, check out mm-hmm. the Encounters with the Paranormal Volume One and Volume Two. It's called Personal yep. Tales with the Supernatural. So it looks really, really cool. I'm gonna get it the book. Yep. <laughs> All right, man. Well, you have yourself a good evening, and uh, we do thank you for being on the show, and we will see you October 21st. See you then. All right, Gavin. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you, Paula. You're welcome. (laughs) All right. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Uh, Where's my mouth? Where's my mouth? There we go. Oh, man. I don't know what's going on here, but I think uh, we're having some major issues inside our house. Uh... It could be paranormal because we had something weird happen like uh, about 30 minutes ago or so. Facebook bombed out. Yes, I can understand why Facebook bombed out because it stinks and uh, they're starting to have a lot of issues with it. But I was praising YouTube like nobody's business. And we jinxed it. It froze. We jinxed it. Yeah, I guess so. But we're still alive, though. I mean, you're able to hear us. You're able to hear the conversations that's going on. And uh, you can see me. I have a microphone stuck in my nose, and and I don't know what she's doing, but she's, I'm well, looking back at it. So yeah, the screen is frozen, but we are still live. And Paula is about to do a segment that we call the Paranormal Fishbowl. Go ahead and explain what it is. Basically, I draw a question out of the fishbowl. You guys can't see it, but I have a little bucket here. It's not actually a fishbowl, but it's a little bucket. And I've got pieces of paper in it for questions. And uh, I've only got six questions left in my bowl. Um, If y'all would like to have a question being asked as the paranormal question of the week, um, we can do that. And it's something I'll set out on Facebook and and let it carry out for a week and see how my answers go through and last week's question was how can you prove evidence is fact or fake well that's going to be real simple um for me all the videos that i keep seeing online people are saying hey this is a paranormal thing check it out dishes are flying across the room uh cups are getting glasses are going across the counter until they hit the floor and you know stuff floating i mean we all know that that rigged you just do it with fishing line it's it's simple as that i mean i've been debunking lots and lots and lots of videos um remember that one particular one where that little girl was sitting at the table and also the stapler goes flying off and then the papers well her dad was actually in a green screen suit And you can tell for a split second, you can see like a heat signature that you would actually see like if you're standing behind, you know, uh, like maybe like a plane or something, you can see that heat signature from the engine. Yeah. It's the same thing that you saw for a split second because the lighting got screwed up on the green green suit and you could actually see that for a split second, but the father was actually grabbing stuff off of the table and throwing it. Yeah. Horrible. Uh, Here is the question for the week. Oh, God. (laughs) Why is paranormal so controversial? That kind of takes us back to the other thing about faked and real. Yeah. Uh, It's controversial because there's a lot of skeptics out there that don't believe in it. And then you've got folks like me and you and others that debunk the heck out of your stuff because, like they state, when in doubt, throw it out. That's true. And then we've also got the ones that doesn't care what they absolutely, we prove to them that this exists, this exists, we coincide with this and that and the other, and Mm -hmm. they all still think we're crazy. Well, of course. They don't think that uh, life after death actually exists. Uh, They don't believe in ghosts. They don't believe in spirits. And of course, you got that group that's highly religious and they're saying that we're speaking to demons instead of just ghosts. That's your favorite. That's down your alley. Oh, yeah. Everything's a demon. Pretty much. We're talking to demons. We're 100% talking to demons and that's all we talk to. I've heard that several times and... I've heard people tell us that we're going to hell for what we do. We've had, (laughs) I've had. You're going to hell. We're going to hell. And, (laughs) and, And I'm just like, number one, you know, we coincide with something in this world. 
something is staying here in this world that we don't have answers for do we 100% prove that spirits actually exist or ghosts actually exist we try we try but has it been 100% proven? No. no. We, we have taken theories. We have taken trials and errors about situations. What are we actually socially interacting ourselves with? Mm -hmm. um, we've had our little uh, gadgets and our instruments that we have took in on investigations. And, and, you know, we imply them into our investigations. And hopefully that we're getting something in response that we can take some kind of data back and process it as an evidence. Right. And we take pictures. We take, you know, uh, if video. we get video, if we get onto the orb factor, then we're going to get into the 99.9%. .9%. It's not an orb. What is it? Tell our listeners and viewers what is it if it's not an orb? It could be water droplets. Uh huh. It could be dust. It could be insects. It could be pollen. Okay. Yeah, that sounds about right. But it's primarily going to be dust that's going to be close to the uh, front of the camera. True. And of course, everybody that talks about, you know, well, it's large in size and you can see the inside and all that stuff. Well, of course, it's close to the camera. That's the reason why it looks so large. If it's farther away, then it looks like it's shimmering because it's turning or spinning or something like that. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. So, yeah. Um, there's just a lot, a lot of factors that uh, deal with that. So... <clears throat> And of course, uh, you know, I came up with it. Well, I came up with an idea, sort of speak. Um, I have a lot of people that actually send me pictures. That ha they say, check out this orb at the cemetery or check out all these orbs um, in this building. Now, back then, when I went to the French Lick Hotel and they were showing pictures of them gutting out the tunnels to... Uh, you know underneath the uh, hotel to go toward the spring the deal was they know it's haunted so they were trying to tell people it's haunted you go ahead and look at the pictures and it shows lots and lots and lots of orbs and I kid you not on the bottom it actually said spirit orbs were found during taking this picture now I can look at that and say hey, no it's dust but a lot of people that go to the French Lick Hotel will actually see those pictures and probably take what they're saying to truth because, well, it's, it's an established hotel and they are saying they're orbs. So I guess they're orbs. I really like what Keith H. says. Say orb one more time and has a skeleton with a gun. Yeah. That's my favorite. But uh, anyway, back to the idea. You take, um, you have your own little camera rig. You have a like a, a bracket you put your full spectrum camera camcorder on one end with your IR light and then on the other corner you go ahead and actually not a corner the other end you set up the uh, regular camcorder one that cannot see in the dark so basically if you're in pitch black well that's all you're gonna see on that camera when you go look at your full spectrum then you're gonna see everything you're also going to see dust here's the deal if you use both of those together at once if there is a quote-unquote orb the uh, main regular camcorder should pick it up and the reason why I say that is because a real 100% orb has its own luminous so it will actually light up looking on the full spectrum camera you're gonna see everything and anything but if you don't see it on the, the regular camera then it's dust nothing and I believe uh, my buddy Jeremy at uh, Paranology actually came up with a, a camera it's a handheld one and it's basically the same principles you have a full spectrum and you have a regular but it's also a handheld one I think it's like maybe five inches long and maybe four inches wide 
but it's actually handheld and it has two handles on it so it's basically the same principle same idea so that way you can actually uh, see if you're capturing real orbs were you going to say something because you're looking at me like I was rambling which I was nothing what I'm not going to say anything oh no okay well I answered my question so you go ahead and answer it what's your what's your answer I done said something long ago. You weren't paying attention. Why, because I was yapping? Yeah. Ah, well, see, I, I ramble. I don't know why. So I guess we got some weird activity going on here at home. Because uh, giving praise to YouTube. YouTube is so cool. Come over to YouTube and the video froze. It's a mannequin. It's a what? We're a mannequin. We're a, yeah, we're frozen. Yeah. It's just really bizarre. I know it dropped during the broadcast. I saw it, but it was uh, because our lights flickered at the same time. So it looked like that we were actually about to have a, a power failure of some sort where the power was going to go off for maybe a couple seconds and pop right back on. But it didn't. The lights flickered. And then all of a sudden uh, it said um, broadcast interrupted and then it popped right back on. So it just like happened like it, it didn't happen. But this time, yeah, video is frozen. I have a microphone in my face, and Paula is looking somewhere. Mm. I have no idea what you're doing. I have no idea. Probably looking at the screen because I see myself. Probably. So, anyway, since you can't see the screens, uh, we're going to have to go ahead and let you know what we would be talking about. Um, let's see. Uh, October 21st we already mentioned we are going to be in Ashburn Georgia at the crime and punishment museum uh, we are having a meet and greet from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. and then of course uh, as you heard from Jeffrey we will be locked inside the jail to go ahead and uh, investigate and film our episode for the paranormal journey into the unknown season 2 uh, let's see we are doing a Ghostology 101 seminar at the McCracken County Public Library or the Paducah Library between 7 and 8 p.m. on October 26th and uh, please do come out to that we are actually giving back to the community we are going to talk to them and give them a glimpse of uh, what it's like to be a paranormal investigator, the do's and don'ts of ghost hunting, and of course uh, getting an in-depth study of uh, showing them what is normal before you can even consider it paranormal and how false positives can actually uh, occur and how you can avoid them. So it's going to be kind of cool. We'll have a Q&A. We'll demonstrate how some of the devices uh, that we we'll use on an everyday uh, investigation work. And then right after that, we will be packing up the truck and taking a 11 and a half hour drive to New Orleans so we can set up at the Haunted Bourbon. And we will be there from the 27th until the 29th in uh, New Orleans. The best part of this whole thing is uh, ticket holders that mention our name that they bought a ticket or they use our coupon code, um, you will receive a autograph picture in a frame and also VIP seating to the premiere of our first uh, episode of the paranormal journey into the unknown so that's really a cool deal you get an autograph picture plus VIP seating to watch the first episode so you guys ought to like that it's gonna be really cool and then of course on October 31st on Amazon a new original series comes out the paranormal journey to the unknown you will be able to uh, watch season one we have four episodes in that right now originally it was going to be six but uh, due to some issues with servers and hurricanes that didn't happen so first episode is going to be St. Albans Sanatorium second episode will be the Old South Pittsburgh Hospital third episode will be the Jailhouse Pizza and of course the last episode is the famed Monroe House season two is going to kick off with the Hartford City Jail and the Hartford City Speakeasy and of course uh, the Hinsdale House and uh, Randolph, Randolph County. County Asylum 
So those are going to be ones for uh, season two. Plus many more. Yep, there's going to be there's going to be some more that are going to be thrown in there. I'm not going to say which ones, but those I can actually name off. But we've got a lot of places that we're hitting in 2018. So we're going to be doing a lot of uh, prisons, jails, hospitals, and uh, quite possibly a bunch of bed and breakfasts. I'm hoping that uh, Lizzie Borden is one of them. Mm, we might see. Well, we got the Sally House, too. Oh, then we got the theater, I was told. Which theater? We have two of I them. I thought we had a the Well, we have two of them in the mm -hmm. mix. I knew about one. You didn't tell me about the second one. Yeah, we have two of them. Okay. So, but yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming up. Um, we're also currently uh, filming a movie called Lucy that's uh, in part with uh, GK Films and uh, In the Shadows Entertainment Group. And we actually have a Hollywood producer that is actually in charge of that to push this movie once it's done out to the theaters in the fall of 2019. So that is going to be interesting. We're going to be shooting a pilot for a new show next year uh, in March. Um, let's see. We are going to be speaking at the what dead of winter is it dead of winter dead of winter in february yeah dead of winter festival in february in alton illinois it's a troy taylor uh event we will be speaking at that and of course uh we're going to be in supercon 2018 in may at edinburgh manor in edinburgh iowa great fest oh actually it's Scotch Grove, Iowa, isn't it? Yeah, Scotch Grove, Iowa, Edinburgh Manor. Mm. So, we got a lot of stuff that's going to be coming up. Yeah, I, I, I know. It's frozen. I have no idea why. Yes, it's a frozen pick. We don't know. You can hear us, though. Yeah, you can still hear us, but, but uh, you can't see us. Or we don't know what's going on with, like I said, we've hit, we're having some issues. All three cameras froze. Yeah. Which is really odd. Well, like I stated, we had some... Something paranormal happened. I mean, something just flew down onto the floor and no idea. It was a piece of paper. A piece of paper. Yeah. When something came down, touched my laptop, and knocked. And there's no wind in here, by the yeah, way. Yeah, there's not. And it literally, because we were burning up in here, by the way. Because we cut everything down so that you guys can hear us. We and don't see have, us. And see us. So we cut the air conditioning and everything. So we sacrificed for you people. And <laughs> so. <laughs> wow. And well. There's no air in here, and all of a sudden we get something comes down, swoops across my laptop, knocks a piece of paper off, and lands it into the floor. Um, if you go back into the footage, I think you could see it. Uh, it's actually, we're there, we're looking up at the ceiling, and we're looking down to the floor, because we're not too sure what just happened. And I know my house has got some paranormal activity in it. And uh, we know that it's haunted. We've investigated. It was our very first investigation that we ever did almost five years ago. Um, we do have a little boy here. And we a grumpy a, old man. We have a grumpy old man. And then we have a frequently, not all the time, I think she's a traveling spirit. And it's a little old lady. We'll smell uh, uh, what we call old perfume, kind of like that toilet water type thing. <laughs> and Ugh. well, it does. The perfume smells like toilet water. Well, they call it toilet water. Splash your face with toilet water. Well, they used to call it toilet water. Maybe it's called toilet. Toilet. Hey, that sounds like a French perfume. Hey, I'm wearing toilet water. Toilet. Well, there actually there is. Did if you, you flush the toilet? <laughs> actually, if you go to some of these antique stores downtown. And you actually go where people have actually kept all the old perfume bottles from the time period. If you actually look them up upside mm -hmm. down, I have ran across a couple of them that actually says toilet water. Ew. Wow. I got, I'll be out there in a second. I got to splash some toilet water on my face. <laughs> wow. Yeah. No. No, that just. Mm -mm. Then it got changed to perfumes in the late eight, the forties, early fifties. Why don't they just splash wear urine on their face? I don't know where exactly <laughs> that term came from for toilet water. I'll have to look it up. But yeah, that was called toilet water in the early time. Probably somebody was drunk, and they thought they were washing their face in the basin or the sink, 
and they ended up splashing their face with toilet water and the guy went back on out toward the bar or the pub and some woman walked up and said ooh baby what are you wearing toilet water oh lord <laughs> Yeah, that's how it works, right? You're awful. Well, how else is it gonna work? You gotta think about it. Put it into a story. Figure it out. I have no idea. I mean, that's what I came up with. You know? No. Quit yawning in the microphone. You're gonna make Sorry. people fall asleep. It's been a long day. I've been up most of the day. So have you? Yes, it has. So, I do apologize, folks. Uh, Facebook crapped out on us earlier today. It kept on connecting, disconnecting, connecting, disconnecting. And uh, I went ahead and said, hey, everybody, get over to uh, YouTube. You guys can watch it there. Everything is really good. And then, bam, YouTube freezes the video. But, hey, audio is still kicking. So, I'm looking at the little uh, meter here going up and down as I'm talking. So, that's a good thing. But yeah we got nothing else so anyway we can just ramble on for the next 15 minutes or we can just call it quits what do you want to do oh uh, i got two more shout outs to go out to okay well you get because i didn't get to make the announcement earlier because i was trying to figure out what all we were doing because we were having to face not announcements it's just encouragements because of all the things that we've gone through in the past week just for public eye okay we've lost a couple of important people in the past week we've lost uh tom petty yep and uh, I don't know how many people were Tom Petty listeners, but Last Dance and Mary Jane, yes, sir. And Hugh Hefner, God help the angels upstairs. Okay, now here's the funny part. Hugh Hefner died on hump day. Oh, wow. <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that. Yeah, although it's really funny that there was a, a meme that I saw. It was, uh, I forgot, who the heck was it? It was, um, it was one of the main guys, not like uh, Saddam Hussein, it was somebody else. It wasn't Osama bin Laden because he's already gone, but it was somebody else. And, it's, and, he, and he stated on there, he said, when I die, I'm going to have 72 versions. And you see Hugh Hefner saying, <laughs> you better hurry up. Oh, yeah, I saw that when I saw that one. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Hugh Hefner has passed on. God love him. He is great. was one of the great icons who gave us a public speech. Started a fad that has proceeded on to many, 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 many more things in life. But and what's that called? Playboy. Playboy. But... The point of it is, he is a monarch to our society. Some people didn't justify his means of what his monarchy was, but he opened a, a sector in our lives. Am I a person that is going to get on front of Playboy and spread? No. But I understand where he comes from. Everybody has a point of view. It's just the same way with paranormal. I mean, we are out there and we are more open nowadays than what we would have been 40 years ago because paranormal has become the acknowledgement of yes it does exist do we still have controversy over it yes um everything has to be done with dignity and some and things got to be done with taste so yep. I, and i give praises to our two people that have passed this past week and uh hugh hefner Laying next to Marilyn Monroe. Oh, yeah, that's right. He got buried next to Marilyn Monroe. And here's a fun fact that you must know. Marilyn Monroe was the first Playboy pinup in Playboy. The first one. Very first one. But he never, never got, met her. got to meet her. Yep. They could call the photographers in to take the picture, and he never met her. That's kind of weird. Anyway, one thing I wanted to show you guys. Uh, which we can't. <laughs> which we can't, yeah. But you can visualize it. I am holding the Ghostbusters, the ultimate visual history book. The oh, yeah. The foreword is by Dan Aykroyd. The introduction is by Ivan Reitman, written by Daniel Wallace. And Th it's a coffee table book. It's one of those big, thick books that you'd stick on the coffee table. Very, a lot of graphic pictures in it. Oh, yeah. It's All got stickers. It's got 
Peter Venkman's business card. I've got storyboards. Got the script. Um, art, uh, the art that they use for the movie. Let's see. Uh, the reversed F, the revised FX breakdown for Vigo's painting. Oh my God! This is just phenomenal. It's awesome. I guess we have to wait until next week so I can show you guys this, but this book is awesome. I'm glad to add it to my collection. But it's pretty cool. I found the car. Echo one. Yeah. Oh, it's just funny when he says I found the car. It needs to have a spring oil filter, uh, new tires, new this, new that, new that. And the guy, and he's like, well, how much did you pay for it? Oh, only $1,500. Oh, and also it needs blah, blah, blah. Oh, I see. <laughs> so, yeah, that's interesting. But it's a great book. Very nice. I usually get these books. I've got, believe it or not, I have the Industrial Light and Magic book because I love special effects. I love visual effects. So I've got, like, the Industrial Light and Magic book straight from LucasArts. Uh... And Skywalker Ranch. I also have the Digital Domain book. And gosh, I don't know what the other ones are. I got lots of books. Cinematography books. You know, they're, they're really cool. I mean, I love Hollywood special effects. And uh, that's what's made me start my own company a long, long time ago. I started one called Dreamscape Production Studios, which was pretty cool. And uh, it only lasted like maybe, what, four years? And then uh, I wound up moving came out to Tennessee and then I started up three CGFX uh, animation studios and of course that one I actually did work on uh, three movies I worked on one called the flood and I did the previous uh, images of uh, a flood it basically floods uh, San Francisco from an underwater uh, earthquake and uh, I worked on a few other projects too so that was kind of cool that was the highlight of uh, my career with special effects but it was just primarily doing modeling and uh, just uh, pre-visualizations so it wasn't that bad pretty cool but anyway let's give a huge shout out to our guest Mike Brissecker the uh, published uh, author many many books you got to go to bring that up here. I want to get the address. It's on the back. Haunted something. Yep, Haunted Road Media. Yeah, Haunted Road Media. You guys go there. Pick up his books. He will greatly appreciate it. We're going to be going there to go ahead and uh, pick up some books as well because I really want to check out the Encounters with the Paranormal Volume One. And since I got two, so we can. Oh, it's a cute little doggy. Sorry. Um, Squirrel. And of course, uh, Jeffrey Vaughn. Crime. Uh, gosh, I'm tired. <laughs> Crime and Punishment Museum, Ashburn, Georgia. Going to be one heck of a night there. And of course, uh, we're going to be locked inside. And we get to feel the experience of being locked inside a real jail. I'm going to lock her in a cell. You want to go down on death row? I can lock you down there and lose the key. Okay, I'm getting death eyes. You can't see it, but I can. Only if I can use the jailer's nine... nine ah, right in the mouth. <laughs> that was rude. I didn't know I could reach that high. Oh, you're just horrible. Well, go ahead. What were you going to say? I said only if I can take the jailer's nine... The cat of nine tails off the wall. And, it, and that would be my return then revenge. What? The, the what? The jailers, huh? Cat of nine tails. They've got a cat of nine tails that one of the jailers used. You mean a cattle prod? No. What the It's a cat. Really? What's a cat of nine tails? It's like a whip. Oh. Well, you do like whips and chains, don't you? You're just weird. They excite me. Okie doke. <laughs> Just joking, guys. We gotta have a little bit of fun on the show. Oh yeah. Well, this is a major fan of uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. Oh yeah, the last one comes out next February. Yeah, I know. I gotta take you on Valentine's Day. I've taken you both of them on Valentine's Day. Okay. One other last thing. Oh God. 
Yeah, see, he's going cat. Cat of nine tails is a whip. Yeah, told you. Hell, I thought it was a dang uh, cattle prod. Really? Yeah. A cattle prod. How do you get cat of nine tails at, into a form of a cattle prod? I don't know. That's what all I could think of. Two totally I couldn't even, different things. I couldn't think it was a whip. It didn't sound like a whip. Also, please pray for Puerto Rico. They're still trying to survive down there. I have a very good close friend's daughter that's down there that I've, I've known her for a long time, too. They still do not have electricity. They still not have internet. Um, it's no internet? No internet. Jeez. Very little cell phone coverage down there. Very little. Um, the government has been incapable of managing the disaster that they were experiencing. As if they're calling it a full-blown warlike humanitarian crisis right now. Jeez. And uh, FEMA is still going to take weeks for them to even get FEMA there. Uh, someone made a phone call to FEMA and told them to go online and apply for help and assistance. How can they do that when they don't even have internet connection down there? No, oh, that was real stupid for the idiot to even say that to him. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, I can actually relate to that. One of my old jobs it was hilarious. We had a, a power failure. We don't have any power. And uh, one person... Uh, was late for a meeting and he goes didn't you get the email um sir we have no power that means i'm not going to get an email on the computer duh du -du -du. what are you reading oh that's my thing about the puerto rico i had pulled up ah. what's her name's thing so i could get all the details off of it oh well, all right, folks, we do appreciate you hanging out with us, even though uh, we're just rambling and rambling and rambling. And usually I do that a lot. So at least sometimes it does make sense what I'm talking about. And sometimes it just don't. And she just looks at me weird, tells me to shut up. Like right now. No? No? Yeah? I have no idea what she's doing. <laughs> I'm getting mixed uh, f readings here. Mm. Anyway, you all have yourself a great night. And what do I usually say? Oh, keep ghosting. Keep yeah. ghosting. Yeah, that's it. Go pop the trunk on these ghosts. Oh, wait. Wrong show. Lord.